Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Ida Jing, and I am the communication manager for Refugees United, which is an organization that connects refugees who've lost contact with each other due to war, conflict, and disaster. And first of all, I'd just like to thank the organizers of this festival for allowing us to be here today. And I'm here to accept the prize on behalf of uh, my team members of Refugees United. And um, this category, the digital communities category, focuses on the social impact of digital technologies. And in this presentation, I'll be focusing on um, one question, which is, is it possible to create a digital community for people without access to digital media? And this is really at the heart of what we do at Refugees United, as many of the people we serve do not have access to digital media. And when we think about digital communities in the West, I think a lot of us tend to think about digital platforms or communities such as Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. And at least I do. I like to procrastinate on some of these digital platforms. And for our generation, the, um, the face of social media and digital communities is very much a guy like Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, for Refugees United, the face of, refu of the face of digital media and digital community is really a guy like this one. His name is Misani Biketi, and he is a refugee from South Sudan who now lives in Uganda and who's been looking for his wife for five years. So whenever we think about the users in our digital community, we think about him. And... <clears throat> Like all other human beings, his story is unique. Uh, but sadly enough, there are also s parts of his story that's not unique. Um, like many other refugees in the world, um, he's been forced to flee and he's been forced to leave his family behind. And um, like many of the other refugees on our platform, he does not have access to a computer. Um, he's illiterate, uh, like many of the other users on our platform. And uh, most refugees are also scared to share information. So not only is he facing a digital divide, he's really facing a digital app is completely unconnected and unplugged. And let me just elaborate a little bit on this and the work that we do. Um, yeah, so as I said, we assist refugees who've lost contact with each other. And this also means that our work mostly takes place in Africa and uh, in East Africa in particular. We also have activities in the Middle East, but it's primarily Africa at the time being. And Refugees United is also a tech nonprofit organization. And the way that we work and the, day, the way that we do business is very much like that of a startup or a startup organization. We are driven by innovation and trying to test the boundaries of new technology and digital media to see what's possible. Uh, more than anything, just this idea of connecting people who are not able to connect otherwise. So, in short, we allow refugees to connect through a safe, anonymous online database. And um, the reason why I chose this slide is um, it's a quote by Bill Clinton. Um, who's also, who in last year, in 2012, highlighted Refugees United as uh, one of the ideas that was changing the world in a Time Magazine cover story. And uh, Refugees United was founded by Christopher and David Mickelson, who are both their brothers. They're also social entrepreneurs. They are very sad that they couldn't be here today. Um, Together, we are on a mission to connect one million refugees by 2015. And I'll be the first to say that it's a very ambitious goal, but it's also the goal that really, um, that really energizes the entire team and keeps us going and ensures that we don't get a lot of sleep. And um, yes, I'm also um, aware that this is a really ambitious goal and we have a lot of challenges ahead of us. Uh, right now, there are about 45 million forcibly displaced people in the world, and there are about 15 million refugees worldwide. So uh, we have a lot on our plate. 
And we also know that uh, most of these refugees and many of the forcibly displaced people in the world are leaving their families behind as they go out and search for shelter and food and a new community where they can, where they can stay and be safe. And many flee for different reasons. Some flee because of political situations, uh, which means that they are reluctant to share information on our, in our digital community. Um, others choose to stay in their home country, but just move around within the same, uh, within the same country, internally displaced people. And we also know that a refugee camp is a very dangerous place. Uh, which makes our work even more challenging and which makes it even more challenging for us to, to build a community in these places where information is, isn't very accessible. And yes, so this is really where Refugees United comes into the picture. Uh, when families have lost contact with each other, we do whatever we can to try to put them back in touch through our digital community and through our platform. Uh, which is accessible from multiple entry points. Um, you can uh, access the platform and the community via SMS, which I'll explain later. And you can also ex uh, access the platform via a toll-free number, which means that if you're in a refugee camp, you can call um, one of our representatives uh, without being charged. Uh, you can also access our platform, of course, um, obviously from a computer and as also from your mobile phone. Um, there is one, one of our services in particular that I'd like to highlight in this, uh, in this presentation, which also goes back to the question I raised in the introduction, which is how do you connect people without access to the internet? And we've created and built a USSD application which allows refugees in refugee camps uh, to search for family from a low-cost mobile, fo mobile phone. So, with this technology, you can really take the search for a missing family member into your own hands. And it's based on a technology that's, co that's called USSD, which is very popular in, um, in, in Africa. So each country has its own short code. So as an example, in Kenya, if you were in a refugee camp there and you would have lost track of your sister or brother, um, you could, from your mobile phone, type star 883 pound and then access our platform without having to go through the, the internet. So it's the same digital community, but it just have different, uh, has different entry points. Yeah, we also have a service uh, which allows family to, families to search for their family members from a low cost mobile phone with access to the internet. But a lot of refugees do not have money to go to the internet, even if they have a phone that will allow them to access the internet. So this is why we partnered with mobile operators in East Africa who provided uh, a zero rating, which basically means that you can uh, search from the internet without being charged. So our URL is zero rated in some countries. And of course, the goal of reaching one million is, uh, as I said before, it's, um, it's, it's a huge challenge. And so we're very happy that we work with so many different partners who help us out every day and really help us add to amplify and scale the work that we're doing. Um, in particular, I could highlight Ericsson, who is our main technology partner, uh, very just uh, energetic team of people who help us out every day with technical stuff. And we also receive support from, as I mentioned before, mobile operators in East Africa. To give you one example, I could highlight Vodacom DRC in Democratic Republic of the Congo. And they've donated 8 million text messages to our organization, which will allow us to send out text messages to refugee camps. And they've also donated the toll-free number and the, um, and the zero rating service. So, we work with a wide range of partners, but most importantly, we have a presence in refugee camps such as Dadaab, which is the world's biggest refugee camp in Kenya, and also in Kakuma in Kenya, refugee-prone areas in, U in Uganda and in Cairo. And specifically, we have outreach team who basically goes from tent to tent uh, in the camps and from door to door uh, to register families with, uh, with a mobile phone. And one thing you'll see when you visit a refugee camp, um, I recently visited, uh, visited Kakuma refugee camp in Kenya, and 
everyone there has a phone, so people might not have access uh, to, or barely access to information and um, food and water, but most people have a cell phone. Okay. Yes. So text messages is a big part of what we do, sending out text messages to camps. So if I were to give you an example of one of our text messages, a text message could read, searching for a missing family, go to uh, type star 883 pound, or searching for a missing family or brother, um, call our toll free number. And this is our way of communicating directly with, uh, with refugees in refugee camps, and also kind of um, pointing them to the digital community. And of course, we use a wide range of communication channels to really get the message out, because one thing is having this platform, another thing is allowing people and generating awareness to, to ensure that they will actually access the digital platform. So every, every day, every week, uh, we launch different initiatives. We have, uh, currently, we have a wide range of radio campaigns in different countries. We are running campaigns right now in DRC, and in Kenya, about to launch new radio campaigns in Uganda, uh, mostly radio campaigns that reaches refugee-prone areas. Uh, in July, to give you an example, we launched a nationwide um, comic book campaign with Shujaz, which is a very popular uh, comic book concept and brand universe in, um, in Kenya. So we distributed 500 and five, yeah, nearly 600,000 comic books in Kenya, and we've also distributed many comic books in, in refugee camps in Kenya to, to get the message out. And yes. <laughs> and in addition to building a digital community, we also try to do what we can to build a community around our organization. And we're just very grateful for all the support we received from random people coming up to us and like offering their help or their support. So. As an example, this year uh, we organized a global hack for good, which took place in Cairo and Silicon Valley and Nairobi, and where we just basically gathered a group of techies who donated their skills and their expertise and their know-how to our organization. So it was about 60 people from different countries, and the winners of this global hack for good would then go to Kakuma, probably most likely in November, to test their prototype. And the reason why we're doing all of these things, in addition to building a community um, around the organization, and is also to really to ensure that our digital community is accessible to, to everyone. So these were some of the technical challenges that they looked into. We also this year did uh, a hack in London, also to try to look into making the platform and making the community more accessible for people who are completely um, unplugged. Yes, so um, this is a quote. Um, this is one of the last slides. This is a quote by Piero Omidyar. Uh, Refugees United, among others, is funded by the Omidyar Network, which is founded by Pierre Omidyar, who also started eBay. And in this quote, he says, if we can help people reconnect with their communities, I think we can work together as a global community and solve the world's problems. So we're again thankful the, for, the, uh, for the support we receive from the Omidyar Network and believe like him that uh, connecting people like that is the way forward. And I leave you on a positive note. Um, this is a picture of two sisters who were reconnected after 16 years of separation. And what's so um, surprising about this story and the reason why it brought tears to my eyes when I heard it was that it's, um, they actually been living within five kilometers distance of each other for all these years. They just didn't know that the other person was there. But instead of me elaborating on this story, um, I prefer to show a video uh, which is based on their story. It's a new animation video which we created with a production company in Sweden. And um, it's based on their story and it's narrated by Mess Mikkelsen, who's an actor and also our a Danish actor and also our goodwill ambassador. So thank you.
It was morning. I was out fetching water. Water for my family. Like I do every day. And then I heard the guns. I heard my family scream, cry for help. My help. But the soldiers were everywhere. I saw everything. I ran. I ran for my life. I don't know where, but I got away. Found a place to hide. I was safe, but what about my family? Something told me they were still alive. So I went back. I had to. For them. But they were gone. I had no home. No family. There was no one to help me. Estelle never gave up hope. And in 2012, she heard about Refugees United, a mobile platform that helps reconnect loved ones separated by conflict or disaster. Shortly after signing up, Estelle received an SMS from Refugees United with a message from her long lost sister. Using the platform, the girls exchanged phone numbers and found that after 16 years of separation, they were living only five kilometers from each other. The sisters continued to use the Refugees United platform in hope of finding other members of their family. Today, there are over 43 million refugees worldwide, many with stories just like Estelle's. Help us to reconnect them with their loved ones by sharing this film. Learn more on our website.